Hey everybody, it's Kristen. I wanted to bring power cooking to life for you guys today. We've been talking about it in our party today and uh, there's a great resource that I encourage you guys to print and that is the PDF of power cooking and it is um, the recipes that are mentioned in the party today, the shopping list, how to put this together and all. But if you're like me, I'm a visual person. It's like one thing to read it, it's another thing to see it and that's why I wanted to go ahead and do this. So um, I do encourage you guys to print this power cooking guide um, because it is some great recipes that are going to save you a lot of time in the kitchen. So the whole idea behind power cooking is to cook uh, the protein for several meals at once. So in this case, chicken. Um, there are five recipes. So if you wanted to do five pounds of chicken at once and then kind of make the, you know, divide it into five packages and make up the five recipes, kind of prep that, you certainly can. Um, I'm just doing two today. So it's kind of up to you in terms of the recipes you like, the time you have. But in general, you know, cooking the chicken is very easy to do, but do it once. Don't do it like three times or five times or whatever. So, um, and also in the party, I talked about that you could use your multi-cooker for cooking the chicken. And especially if you're gonna do like three to five pounds of chicken, uh, to either pressure cook that or sous vide is the way to go. But maybe you're not gonna cook that much, or maybe you don't have the multi-cooker. I wanted to share with you guys another way to do uh, your chicken quickly and easily and deliciously. And that is to cook it in a rock rock. So this this is the Dutch oven. You could also use the everyday pan. It's just um, half the size, not quite as tall. Um, I have two pounds of chicken in here and you can tell in the Dutch oven, fits easily. I could have done more chicken if I wanted to in terms of space, but rock rocks are amazing because you can use them in your oven, under your broiler, on your stovetop, in the microwave, which is what I did for the chicken, out on your grill, and they go in the dishwasher for easy cleaning. So super easy to do. I did two pounds of chicken and they were still a little icy in the middle in about 12 minutes. Um, if they were totally thawed, probably 10 minutes would have been fine. So super easy to do. And even though you're thinking meat cooked in the microwave, that sounds disgusting. I would never do it. Trust me, when you cook in a rock rock or even if you do it in stoneware, there's something about cooking in the microwave in the clay because the, the rock rock is a clay pot that just makes it taste so delicious. Like you'd never know it was cooked in the microwave. So I have uh, the chicken that I've gone ahead and cooked. As I said, I did about two pounds. I'm going to use the salad chopper and this is a handy tool for any of the chicken that you're going to prepare for these power cooking recipes. Once you cook them, you want to chop it up and you can do it right in the pot. So here I am right in the rock rock chopper this up if you've used the multi cooker and you've used the pressure cooker setting for your chicken right in that pot go ahead and just take the scissors um, the, the salad choppers are called I call them the chicken scissors um, you can take that right to the meat and we're just gonna chop this up just you know bite-sized pieces um, and then we're gonna put this into our baggies since I'm making two recipes I'm gonna divide this into uh, two and I'm gonna make mine to freeze but if you're doing the power cooking, there's no reason that you couldn't make one of the meals up and prepare it that night, like while the, everything's hot, prepare it that night for dinner. Maybe another one of the meals you just put in the baggies, but into your refrigerator, and you eat that, you know, two or three days later as another meal. And then maybe the rest you freeze. And the whole idea is with the freezing part of it is, is you have that busy day where, you know, you got home from work late, you didn't get anything prepared. Uh, maybe you um, thought you were gonna have time to make something and you don't, whatever. Those are the nights where you end up going through the drive-thru, right? You're like, ah, oh, nothing's ready. I don't feel like cooking. I'm just gonna, you know, we're just gonna load up and go to McDonald's. Well, goodness, McDonald's has gotten super expensive. Like if the four of you are going, it's probably, in my family, if it was four of us in this day and age, it would probably be like $60. And that is ridiculous for McDonald's. So there is no reason to do that when you have these, these power cooking meals. Uh, there's also a series of beef I'll be sharing in the party as well with ground beef. But these are in the freezer and you can cook them from frozen. So just pull them out of the frozen, out of the freezer, put them into a saute pan or in your pressure cooker or you know something like that and cook them right then and there. They really don't take any effort. So anyways, I've gone ahead and I've chopped up the chicken as you can see here. And let me grab some tongs real quick or a spoon. And I'm gonna put them into quart freezer bags. And as I said, I'm gonna be doing two recipes. So I'm gonna divide into two. And there's no, I, for me, there's no measuring. I'm just gonna guess, you know, that we're gonna get it about even. Let's see. And I recommend using freezer bags. Since they're going in the freezer, you don't wanna get freezer burn. You wanna, you know, have everything, you know, last and stay fresh. And these will stay fresh for months in your freezer. I mean, I hope they don't last that long. I hope you use them sooner than that. But if they sat there for that long, that would be okay. So we're just gonna, this last little bit, just put a dab in both 
both bags and make sure that it is even. Okay, then we're going to follow our recipe. Um, so the two recipes I'm gonna show you are the smoky black bean chicken wraps and the Dijon chicken noodle toss. So it tells me, I'm just following the directions in the power cooking, so to bag number one, that's this guy here, I have uh, one portion of make-ahead chicken, so that's about a pound of chicken. I'm gonna add a can of black beans drained. Um, if you haven't seen the can opener in action or if you don't own this, this is something you need to get in your kitchen. Um, what it does is it basically lifts the lid off the can as opposed to cutting through the metal so that you have a smooth edge and no cut fingers. Works a little differently than most can openers. Most can openers, you kind of hear on the side of the can like this one. This one actually, this is where all the magic happens, right here. You're gonna slide that onto the can just until it catches the can, give it a little twist. It'll grab the can, and if you can hold the can like this, you got it on there right, and you just twist it around. And once it goes all the way around, it looks like it's not doing anything. It doesn't even look like it's opening it. But you're going to feel the pressure release a little bit, and you might hear a little click. Then I go backwards, and that releases it. And I'm going to hold this up to the camera. It doesn't even look like I cut it, right, or that I opened it, but it is open. You're going to use this little bird beak here. You see this little right here with your thumb. That's what activates it. And we're gonna put that on the rim of the can, pinch with our thumb and lift the lid right off. And as you can see, the can and the lid are smooth to the touch. So we need to drain this. I'm gonna use this little colander here real quick, drain and rinse. And then this is also gonna go into the bag with the chicken. And then I'm gonna teach you a little trick, um, something that I've discovered different from these recipes. Get all the juice out of here is it has you add um, a, uh, some water at this point. And I have found there's no point to freeze water. It just makes the bag too big to manage. If you, you run a risk of if you get a hole in the bag, that water is gonna go everywhere and make a mess. So I just make a, bag, a note on the outside of the bag to add the one and a half cups water when I'm gonna cook. So that's my little tip for you. Don't ever, don't freeze the water, just leave that out. Um, and then it's gonna call for um, some smoky barbecue rub. So this is from Pampered Chef. Um, calls for one to two tablespoons. Um, I'm gonna go heavy on it. I like. I really like the flavor. Um, you can measure, but I'm not much of a measurer. And actually the lid, uh, there's some grooves in the lid. If you go to the top groove, that's about a tablespoon. And again, we don't need to be precise. So I say about a cap full is a tablespoon, maybe a little less, you don't need to be heaping on that. And we're gonna do two of these. And we're just dumping this in the bag. This is like a dump meal. There's like no mixing, there's no extra dishes. We're gonna keep this very, very simple. And what I like to do is, okay, so that's all the ingredients that are gonna go in here at this point. We're gonna seal the bag, and then I just kind of give it a little mix, you know, kind of mix it up, because you wanna get that flavor all around that chicken, and, you know, as it's setting, it's gonna kind of marinate a little bit, and then, too, when you're gonna cook, it's gonna be that much more, um, more even and you don't want to have any extra air in there air is not a friend of yours in in the freezer so if you found that there's some errors there was in that time i just let it out okay so there is bag number one for our uh, black beans and as i said i'm going to make a note sharpie's my friend i'm going to put a note on here to add one and a half cups water because otherwise i may forget that Okay, so there's bag number one. Then for bag number two, um, it says, so we're gonna start another bag, we're gonna do two cups of cooked rice. So I knew I was doing this last night, I was making rice anyway, I doubled the batch so that I would have it. But if you have leftover rice, this is super handy. And we're just gonna measure out two cups. Hopefully I'm not gonna make a big mess on my counter as I'm doing this. I think I am, I'm gonna make a big old mess. But And again, you don't even need to be much of a measure if you just wanna throw in all your leftover rice, you know, that's fine which is probably about what I should have done here. That eh, looks about good. That's about our two cups of rice. And we're gonna add another tablespoon of the barbecue rub to this. Now this probably, because my rice is a little dry, might not mix up as nicely as uh, the other bag, but what the heck. However it does, it does. Okay, seal that up. Give that a toss to mix that up. Got too much air in there, as I said. Okay, then the next part is another trick from here. This says to place bag number one into bag number two. That gets kind of messy when you have to pull it out because you got the bags in there. So I take at this point a large freezer bag, these are quart size, and I put the two bags in there together. 
So bag number two, bag number one, wherever that went. And again, you want to have those bags where um, there is, you know, the, the air is out. And I didn't seal those. Whoops, that's the wrong bag. There we go. That's the next one. <laughs> bag number. So there's my chicken bag. There's my rice bag. All of this is going to go into the big freezer bag. And then you can either cut out the instructions here and put them in the bag so that you have them when it comes time to prepare, or I just make myself a note. And basically what's gonna happen when it is time to prepare this meal is I'm taking, it says place contents of bag one and two into a large skillet, let that kind of saute. Again, that water is gonna help all those flavors infuse. And then you're gonna serve it in a tortilla with a wrap. You can add chicken, whatever. So it has you know some other instructions to finish it up. I'm just gonna write that on the bag so that when I pull this out of the freezer, it's gonna say it's smoky black bean chicken wraps and have my notes put in saute pan, serve with tortilla. Done. There is dinner. That is how easy. So again, you do a little bit more work here, but really how much work was that? And you have a meal ready to go. Okay, so now on to meal number two, because we've already cooked the chicken. Uh, we're going to make Dijon chicken noodle toss. So I have a portion of make ahead chicken and it calls for two cups of peas. My family's not real big on peas, so I'm probably not going to do two cups. I'm going to probably do a cup. So, but that's it. When you cook for your family, you get to make those decisions. Yeah, one cup I can tell is gonna be plenty for my family. Okay, so one cup of peas in there. That is the first bag, easy peasy, right? Seal that up. And then in my other small quart size bag, uh, this recipe calls for four ounces of ham. Clear some room here, which I have already gone ahead and diced up. I just use deli ham, so this is not, you know, anything fancy. This is, you know, lunch meat that I always have on hand. And I dice that up, you can see that. And we're gonna add to this um, two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. And I love this little guy. This is the little petite measure all cup when I have to measure little bits of mustard and mayonnaise. If you use a measuring spoon, you know it goes in the measuring spoon but never comes out. With this, we're gonna kind of do this little plunger action and it's gonna eject all the Dijon mustard into what we're doing. Okay, so two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. There we go. Into the bag. And again, I kind of did that in the bag, but I, I kind of smushed it to eject everything out. As you're gonna see here, I'm gonna scrape off that end. I wanna get everything in the bag. But again, everything came out. There's nothing left in my measuring cup. And now we need a can of um, condensed chicken noodle soup. Now, I know this has a pull tab and you know, you're gonna think you're just gonna pull it, but I'll tell you, if you do that, when you go to scrape the can, that edge is still a little sharp and that's gonna be nicking up your scraper. So you don't wanna do that. So get out your smooth edge can opener again and go ahead and open the can. Whoops. Um, even though it has a pull tab, use your smooth edge can opener so that when you scrape the can clean, you're not nicking up your scrapers. Okay, so we've gone all the way around. Again, using the little bird beak. Again, scraping off that lid. Okay, at this point, hopefully the bag stays open well enough. And we're gonna just scoop that in there. And then we're gonna give this a little stir as well to mix everything up. And then these two bags are gonna go together in the freezer. Or again, if this was gonna be your dinner, you wouldn't even need to put it in the bags. You could just have everything prepped and ready to throw onto the stove. And again, this is all gonna go into um, a skillet to cook. Uh, you do add to this recipe some sour cream and then it's served over pasta. So those would be two ingredients you need to have ready to go when it is time to serve it. But those are two things that I always have on hand, so it's not like I wouldn't be able to just pull this out of the freezer and, um, and make what I wanted to make. Pull that out of the way. So again, we're gonna take this, kind of mush it up, get it all mixed up. And then the two bags are gonna go in the big bag. And I'm gonna write my instructions on the outside here. So this would be to, as I'm cooking, I'm gonna add eight ounces of sour cream and then serve over pasta so that I have all my instructions ready to go when I pull this out of the freezer, if that's what I choose to do, or even if I put it in the refrigerator. 
but these freeze really well and that's the the reason they're put into the different bags is that again you don't want the ingredients getting all married up and mushy and yucky and and sometimes too with some of the recipes like you might want to cook the contents of bag number one first and then add bag number two so there's there's a science behind the recipes and why they're put into the two bags and things like that so follow along because they're super easy to do they're super delicious and wouldn't it be great to have a couple of these in your freezer ready to pull out whenever you have a night that you don't have time to cook so I hope this little demo um, kind of brought power cooking to life and why you might like to incorporate this into your meal prep um, it's just you know again doesn't even take you much time I say like on a Sunday afternoon but you don't even need a Sunday afternoon you need like a Sunday one hour and you could probably have five meals put together easily in your freezer ready to go so happy cooking